Welcome to episode three of the Be Kind, Be Happy podcast. Uh, Saturday morning, we have Byron and Lee. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to our third episode of Be Kind, Be Happy. And for, t- for today's episode, we'll be theming it around energy. And to start us off, I actually had a question for Lee from someone on Instagram asking how Lee keeps in, in shape and how his exercise and fitness practice has a spiritual component or whether it's just a, a, a physical practice on its own without anything related to spirituality? So, I, t- t- nice question. <laughs> but um, to answer that, like, I think they go uh, hand in hand, right? And so much so that when I'm not feeling very spiritual or when I'm feeling low energy, like very low energy or low connectedness, I seem to not have the motivation to exercise. So, you know, you could probably use the the physical exercise to increase your energy and your spirituality, right? You have to have a a dedicated practice to to both. But as I was touching on the podcast last week with the cycling, um, it's to me now it's it's more than just a fitness, uh, you know, like just riding my bike is not, just a fitness component i honestly feel like this absolute overwhelming joy or connectedness to to all the different times i was riding that bike uh you know this is road biking like sometimes 50 kilometers to 100 kilometers so it's it's high intensity endurance um it's a mental exercise in itself and but i can i feel this connection to like oh when i was going up that hill or struggling um, you know, and, and, and sometimes when you're going up that, you're like, Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Now I'm tackling it with the mindset. Like I literally can do anything. So it's a full connection. Cause it's like, I got myself, I got my own back in those moments when I wasn't able to do it now with the positivity. And it's like, almost like clearing all those channels as I go. And that's why I was saying it was like enlightenment on a bike, you know, nice. and I really feel like that's true. But how do you, um, what, what, what's your take on this question? That's a, honestly, like you gave a very good answer. Just to add a bit to that, I think for me personally, my exercise is a spiritual practice as well because when I'm practicing everything that I do, I'm doing it in the moment. And I guess that's where the spirituality comes in. So when I'm doing push-ups at the gym, I, I do yoga and stretching very often. So when I'm stretching and yo- doing yoga, I'm always focusing on the breath focusing on the sensations, keeping my mind focused on one point. And so I'm able to maintain concentration, maintain gratitude, maintain all the good stuff. Um, And so that's how I see my exercise practice as also a spiritual practice as well. They go hand in hand. I like what you say as well in terms of when I'm not feeling high energy, I can use my exercise to boost up the energy and then just bring myself to a different light a different perspective for the rest of the day absolutely and it's one of these weird things too right unless you are really pushing yourself to exhaustion which you know you should do every once in a while to it's good it's important to see your limits you know like whether it's lifting weights or running or or, or hiking or whatever sure. um you know we, we were in we were in colombia and we we signed up for this uh Uh, lost city of columbia trek right and prior to the lost city trek we we sailed from panama city to to cartagena colombia it's like a it was a week long island hopping you know anchoring swimming so we were getting exercise but you know we were drinking lots of beer and we were eating well eating um fish and lobster along the way you know and you know partying you know whatnot and so Oh my God, were we not ready? Four days hiking in the jungle, intense heat, all uphill. Uh, One day was 12 hours. We did six hours in the morning. We got up at 5.30 a.m., started out six hours in the morning. By lunchtime, we take a break to eat. Oh my God, Uh, everything hurt. (laughs) I I was done and so hungry. So I ate and I ate. 
And then one of the people in our group, in our trek, he was like, oh, I can't overeat. You know, we have still have six hours left. I was like, oh, it's nonsense. I'm so hungry. So he didn't finish his meal. He hand, he gave me his his leftover rice and, and we had some some fried fish. And I ate all of that too because I swear I was burning so many calories. Uh, and then I was done. I was The next six hours was probably the hardest um, – physically challenging and mentally challenging six hours of my life. I, you know, there were states. Was it because you ate too much? Was it it, because of the food? Yeah, it contributed to it. It was, it was, I mean, also the six hours before it contributed, right? Yeah, for sure. and, And then taking the break stopping. And then, you know, so then you, you're able to have all these thoughts in your head about yeah. what's next and, and, and you kind of want to sleep. Uh, yeah. but you know, moments in that next six hours really kind of changed me and changed my perspective on a lot of things. Uh, you know, there were moments where time just disappeared and it was just keep going, you know, and, and, and almost like just dissociating from my body, just one with the jungle walking. But because it was such a long hike, usually in a, in a, in a bike ride, two hours long, you may do uh, 60 kilometers or something like that. Um, you know, you, you do have those zoning out moments and they're perfect, you know, next thing you know, you're back at home and you're like, wow, that was an intense ride. But when this hike was so long, um, you know, no matter how many times you did that, you would come back to your, your immediate reality and there'd be still like three hours left or you'd be, the hill would just be like this straight up. <laughs> and it, wow. it just didn't even make sense. I couldn't even... Like, I honestly, even now, like, I don't know how we, we did that, you know, <laughs> but, but we did and I'm still here. So, nice. you know, it shows like pushing yourself to the absolute, your absolute um, limit. It's important for, for growth. And, and I don't think I would have the same thoughts or the same attitude right now if it wasn't for even just that particular moment. Nice. Nice. Definitely. Like, I think like pushing your limits makes it more challenging so then you can progress higher and higher, right? It's if you just keep the Absolutely. same pacing all the time, it just becomes too easy and not challenging. So yeah, I think that's important as well for sure. So I have another, I have another question. We'll, we'll try and tackle two questions here. Um, just a little background here. We're trying to add a little bit more structure to the podcast as we go. Um, and we're going to try and set a time limit. 40 to 60 minutes, ideally somewhere in between there, 45 minutes would be good. So we're going to try and push through the segments uh, rather than being totally open and infinite time. Yeah. So my next question is, I I had this question from someone and uh, basically they said they have someone in their inner circle who seems to be low energy, low energy, uh, use the term negative. um, And when you're in that state or when that person is particularly in that state, it's, it's almost as if they don't want to get out of it or that's the perception of the person uh, observing them. And I don't think that's necessarily true. Like I don't think anyone really wants to be negative. They've just come to accept that their reality is negative or their situation is, is negative. You know, they, they kind of let the light out, you know? So how would you tackle that? If you have someone in your very close circle, uh, you know, feeling all those things, like what would be the best way to, to help them maybe get out of it or, or kind of guide them? Like what would, without, if they're not asking for it, like what, what would be the best way? Cause if someone's asking for help, then it's a little bit different, right? Yeah. Great question, Lee. And it's something that we all tackle with every single day, right? Like we're always with around people with high energy, low energy, no energy, people that we want to help people that we want to stay away from. And I think the difference here would be where is the low energy coming from? And is that something that we can try and help? Maybe some people just really don't want anyone talking to them and they're negative and they want to deal with it by themselves. So asking questions or wanting to help will make things worse. Whereas if it's a friend or family that's low energy going through a breakup or something that they're looking for help. So I think from that perspective, if we have a, more empathetic understanding approach, then we would be able to offer more comfort to them. But definitely like in terms of like dealing with people that's low energy, I think the main main 
thing that we have to first understand or do is understand the situation. And with understanding, we can have a more, uh, a more wise way, a more appropriate way to deal with it. But without understanding, without listening, without like really thinking about it and just going based on our instincts or just going what we think we should do without listening to their perspective first, we might end up doing the wrong thing. So yeah. Yeah. I, think from, I think to deal with negative people or people with negative energy, the first thing would be to try and understand where the negativity is coming from and then how we can help would be something that we think of afterwards. What do you think about that, Lee? Good question. Yeah, I, I, like, I like your take on it. Um, the, for, so I did say close. I don't actually know, obviously, because I don't, I, don't, I don't know this, the situation. Uh, I don't like, know it entirely. So I don't know uh, how close the person is. But I think it's more, uh, if you really want to help that person, you have to try and understand their perspective. And yeah. if, if, if you can kind of try and understand their perspective a little bit more, then you'll empathize more. And then you may also get to this point where you realize like sometimes you just have to let it be right. Yeah. Like, like there be the best you and you know, don't, don't let that um, diminish your energy or diminish your, your positivity, happiness, because then you're not, you're not going to be helped to anybody. Right. So if you um, just keep doing you and uh, but be mindful of that person, don't, don't ignore that person or forget about that person um, along the way, you, 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 you may find that they will actually come and, and, and then ask you like, Hey, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, stuck in a, in a rut and, uh, I want to get out of that rut or yeah. whatever. Um, so this is an important thing that you touched on with me, um, off the podcast. And it was really, it was really quite, it's simple, but it was really quite powerful for me and my own um, journey. So the, the, the sentence you said to me was, I will always care, but I will not always help. Or I cannot always help, right? One more time. Yeah. I will always care, but I cannot always help. And so for, that was really powerful for me because I feel like I, and I still am doing that, like <laughs> definitely taking way too much weight on my shoulders and uh, definitely maybe caring a little too much about things that I have no control over. Yeah. Um, but, but when I get to that point, I'm trying to tell myself, right, I will always care, but I cannot always help. And so um, I'd like you just to touch on that um, on the, like if you could just briefly that sentence and, and how you came up with it or, or, or whatnot. Yeah, for sure. Cause like yourself, Lee, um, I was always, thinking of how to help people. And I made a vow that I want to help everyone reach enlightenment. And so whenever yeah. there is someone that needs help, I'm always thinking, what can I do? What can I do? And sometimes I end up like yourself taking on more than I can handle. And it just messes myself up, messes up my energy, my timing, my scheduling. Energy. And it messes up yeah. like how I'm dealing with other people because it means I have less time or I'm not available or whatever. So then I felt really, guilty not guilty but i felt really like unfulfilled i felt like i want to do everything but i cannot and then when i say no i end up disappointing someone or when i cannot do everything that i want to do i end up feeling inferior or something like that so i realized eventually after a few years i realized that even though i cannot always help everyone it doesn't mean that I won't always care. So I would still be thinking about them and have them in my heart and focus and think about how I can change myself or become a better person or become more equipped, more capable to help. So even though I cannot always help now, I would always be thinking about how I can help so that it also helps me grow and improve myself. So I don't think that I cannot help all the time. It's just that I cannot help now but I will try yes. to help as soon as I can. So in the moment when you may feel overwhelmed by uh, different uh, situations, 
um, because you feel powerless or you feel like you, you, you can't help instead of getting down on yourself, which I I'm continually doing. I'm still trying to work on that myself. Yeah. Um, tell yourself in that moment, I will yeah. always care, but I cannot always help. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you, you can't always help later. And for it sure. doesn't mean that, and, and like, for instance, burying your head in the sand and minimizing the amount of adversity you have in your life or on your mind is only going to uh, stop your growth or it's going to limit your um, ability to grow because adversity is, is essentially what causes growth in, in, in sure. all aspects of, of life, not just um, mental growth, physical growth, right? Like if you're trying to build muscle, like you quite literally by lifting weights, you're putting your body in an unfamiliar territory, maybe ripping muscle fibers in, 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 in a sense, and they're growing back stronger because they're trying to prepare you for the next time that you are pushing yourself um, in that, you know, in that way. So adversity, literally, like, like you can actually look at it um, physically is what causes growth, you yeah. know? For sure. Absolutely is what causes growth, what causes strength, you know, well, but the one thing that you can't instantly um, create or, or have is wisdom. Wisdom is how you do or how you act in those situations. And you can't just download wisdom. You can learn from people who are more wise than you. Um, a mentor or something like that. But ultimately, you will have to experience those lessons yourself. And the universe is very interesting because it almost gives you exactly what you need in some sense, right? When you're yeah. listening. And so, when, right when you start thinking you're prepared for uh, a situation, that situation, it, it won't be too soon after that situation is unfolding in front of you. And now is your time to uh, use what you've learned or attempt to and probably fail, you know, like you're never going to have a hundred percent success rate. I know I don't, but that will continue, uh, will, will help aid in your growth and aid in your wisdom, right? Like you were saying, you can't just have intention is not enough, right? Wis you need a, a sense of, of wisdom to uh, really make a change or, or really be helpful. Yeah, for sure. Like you can want to help, but without the wisdom, you won't help more effectively or you might end up causing more pain and suffering than actually like proper help without the yeah, wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. But and, honestly, and, yeah. But you, and you may need to do that, right? You may need to screw up. Like for sure. you do need to screw up, not may, you do need to screw up. Like you yeah. can't expect to have ultimate wisdom I know that's one of my biggest flaws and that's part of me saying it is I, I read a bunch of things or I have these thoughts or something goes well for me in one way and I think, oh my God, like I got it figured out in that sense. So then the next situation that arises, um, sure, I have more, more skill uh, for that situation, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to be successful, right? Like, you know, you, you, yeah. you more, more often than not will fail in, 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 in that, but it's yeah. important to keep going. Yeah, for sure. And you, you know, like just to build on what you say, like if we separate everything in life to either be good or bad, things that are happy and things that are sad, most people would always want to feel happiness, pleasure and joy. And no one wants to feel pain, suffering, failure, right? But if you think about it properly, we don't gain anything from happiness and pl pleasure and success we gain so much more from failing and suffering because that's when we have to learn to transcend it. We don't want to uh, suffer forever or fail forever. And those fail failures are stepping stones. They're lessons. Yes. And they say that winners... Is a lesson, right? Yeah. They say that the winners yes, lose more than the losers. And so... Beautiful. Yeah. So I think if we have a different perspective on failing and like difficulty and hardship, we would learn to enjoy them more or as much or maybe even more because there's so much more value in failure than there is in success. True. Because, True. because failure is, fail, like when we fail, it's like a stepping stone to success. But success is the end. Yes. 
if you want to build on the success, you're going to end up failing again. Because unless, yes. if you, yeah. So failure is Absolutely. what brings you to success. And once you're at success, you want to, if you want to improve from there, you have to end up failing again to get you to higher heights, to greater heights. Yes, exactly, exactly. That's, that was really good. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So from um, that perspective, we don't need to fear failure, don't need to fear suffering, just need to change our perception of it and use it in a constructive way. Yeah, everything can be a lesson, right? For sure. That's, that, that's what you're saying. That's, it's, it's so true. And once you have that mindset and you really believe it to your core, um, you probably will start reflecting on a lot of things and yeah. all the different lessons you have. And part of reflecting on those things and drawing lessons from them and maybe thinking that you drew the lesson, but it might not have been the right one. That is wisdom. That's acquiring wisdom, you know? For sure, that's, for sure. You know, that's, that's what you have to do. It, yeah. And you will do it no matter if you try or not. It's just if you're consciously trying of it, you will grow faster or you will grow higher. And you, you know what I mean? So I think. So, yeah, um, yeah it's just important to note. Um, but let's, I guess let's, like the second uh, thing, the hard thing is yeah. like we know, yeah, it makes sense. But when the moment comes where we have like, like anxiety or stress or hardship, difficulty, it's hard to put that thought, that idea into practice, right? Now everything's good. We're yeah. talking about it in a relaxed setting. It makes sense. But the hard part is when we have to put it into practice during those tough moments. That's when we really learn from the moment. But it's hard. It's hard. Yes. It's very difficult. And that's the life journey, right? Yeah. So you're, you're going to encounter this throughout yeah. your life. It's just maybe part of it, life. As I said, maybe the universe. Uh, yeah, it's part of life. So I think we should go to the next. Uh, well, I mean, we, we're just flowing into it anyways. But yeah. we just have to be mindful. We're at about 18 minutes, 19 minutes. So um, so we wa I wanted to touch on energy. You wanted to touch on energy as well. Yeah. And we kind of just did it in a sense, right? Yeah. So one, how do you... I got a question for you. How do you cultivate um, good energy, positive energy, high energy in your, in your life? How do you do that? Yeah, honestly, great question. And I think for me, we, I would first have to differentiate what is good energy, what is bad energy. And I would categorize the good energy as the wholesome, altruistic virtues like kindness, patience, generosity, wisdom, empathy. Uh, so like love, you know, peace. Those are the good energies. The bad energies, from my understanding, would be like anger, hatred, jealousy, arrogance, ignorance, or the low level, low energy, low level energies. And so how to cultivate or maintain a constant high level energy would be to just cultivate the kindness from within, the happiness, the joy, the patience, the generosity, and using each and every moment as a way to create more of that and whenever we have moments of negativity which would mean moments of anger jealousy hatred stress anxiety and suffering and pain then how can we apply what we've learned apply our practice in the moment and transform that negative energy into a positive one so like we just said like when we have a negative moment a hard moment where we are suffering we are failing or a low energy we, moment yeah, like a low energy moment. How do we apply what we just talked about? Seeing the benefit of the failure to immediately transform the negative energy to a positive one because we see the, the failure not as a bad thing, but as a lesson, as a platform for yeah. growth. So that, that perception change immediately changes the negative energy to a positive, unlimited one where, we, where it helps us grow and improve as a person. Yes, yes. So really to answer that. your that was really good. Yeah, thanks, Lee. So to answer your question more directly, I guess I was beating around the bush, like laying the platform. But right. to to answer the question, um, how we would deal with negative energies would be to try and focus on what practice we can use to transform the negative energy. And I think the transformation starts with transforming our perception. So seeing the negative thing in a more positive light or a different perspective, we can take ourselves from away from the negative spiral into a positive one. And then we just, we, we, we just take the negative thing, put it in the positive side and let it spiral yeah. upwards. 
What what yes. do you think, Lee? What do you think? <laughs> so that was really good. That was like how to turn the negative into a positive, um, how to maintain uh, an overall positive outlook or higher energy outlook because throughout the average day or whatever, right? Because you're not going to have a day filled with, you, you may have a day, but you're not going to have a life filled with absolute positivity every single moment you're going to be hit with low energy people or low energy moments uh you're going to get rejected from something or someone you're going to fail sure. at something and and once you turn that mindset to yeah it's a lesson you're yeah. you're you already have you've already won in a sense and it's definitely more than the first step it's like that's the ultimate uh realization because once you have that that mindset and you truly believe it, like truly believe it to your core. Um, you can't lose, like you won't fail. You can call it a failure and then you can smile about it. Like, Oh, that, you know, ah, I guess I just wasn't ready there. You know, oh, now I, what, what can I draw from this? You know, keep yeah. tackling different experiences. Um, Cause that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm, and I'm failing quite a, quite a bit. The more you try, the more you probably fail. <laughs> so For it's sure. like an interesting, it's an interesting phenomenon. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, 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 I really agree with your, with your point that I, I probably couldn't have said it better. Yeah. And you know, like just to build on what you say, like we talk about no, no one can maintain a level of happiness forever, like, and always be elevated. And I think the reason why is because, Happiness is a dualistic quality with the backdrop being sadness. So if you didn't have sadness to compare it with, then happiness wouldn't exist either. Like happiness doesn't exist on its own. It only exists as a dualistic concept with sadness being its polar opposite. And I think that's, that's something that applies to everything in life. Like ev ev everything in life is conditioned is dualistic in nature and nothing abides by itself i think understanding that and observing life from that perspective we change our complete like that's what brings to peace and leads to an awakening and enlightenment is not wanting things to be only good but accepting the totality of the present moment and not needing yeah. to constantly change the present moment then we are at peace eternally it's not to say that we won't suffer, but we make peace with suffering, knowing that it's a very normal part of life. And without suffering, there's no joy. Without the bad, there's no yes. good. And have, making peace and accepting the totality of life is what brings peace. Not only wanting joy and wanting to be free, from, not, not uh, wanting to avoid suffering, even though that's what we want and it makes sense to, I think it's, it's how we achieve that is to make peace with both sides of the scale as opposed, as opposed to only chasing one and trying to push the other one away, just making peace with both yeah. as be because they are part of each other. Um, and uh, like, you know, the way to limit overall suffering or suffering for yourself is probably to um, limit suffering in, in the world. Because yeah, again, like that's sure. ultimately what, what makes me happiest and highest energy and just fired up and going, you know, besides myself, like the external things that do are other people that are fired up and going, you know, and it yeah. doesn't have to be because I did anything or said anything or an experience that I have with them, but that's what um, excites me and gets me really charged up. Right. So yeah. whether that's watching a video on YouTube of a, or watching watching sports man like you know like yeah. that's to me that's what's interesting about sports yeah. um you know when people are just really going at firing at all cylinders you know and and they're you know so so yeah so so if if more people were doing that then you would be happier anyways for and sure part of doing that is being one of those people that is that is more, you know, trying to be more happy and trying to tackle life's questions, you know, like that, that actually is the answer yeah, right? to for me, sure. you know, for and, sure. and part of, part of doing that as well is, is acquiring more wisdom. <laughs> 
So yeah. you have to keep taking lessons from experiences and, and don't live in the past. Don't live in the future, live in the moment, but draw from past experiences, the lessons you've learned from them and use them in the moment, you know, yeah. and then nice. you'll be able to apply them to the future stuff. Yeah. Nice. Dude, that's excellently. I think like just I a, touch a question on, for you after. Okay. Just, like, just to quickly build on that because you're absolutely right in terms of like wanting to soften or like remove our own suffering starts from removing the suffering of other people. If we want to be happy, we want to bring joy to other people because the energy of other people influences us regardless because we are sensitive beings. Humans are sensitive. And so if we're in a room with everyone being angry, we can't maintain a level of elevated state in that environment because the angry people will affect us at the same time. Like, so that's why if negative people, we can play our part in making them happier, alleviating their suffering that it helps us directly. And so that's why, yes, that's why in many spiritual practices, they they put a lot of emphasis on kindness and compassion because by making everyone happy, it makes yourself happier. At the same time, if you only make yourself happy and everyone around you is still suffering, your happiness is capped because everyone else around you will always influence your level. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so nice one. So it's like you have to do the work. Yeah, um, it makes so, sense. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're at about 27 minutes and we have one new segment coming in. Um, before we close, we're going to do a quote of the week and, yeah. and we may play around mm -hmm. with where we put that in, but, um, well, we're going to put it at the end. I just have one more question for you. So you're in Thailand and you just, they just opened schools, uh, in Thailand. Yeah. So that's, that's different from us here in North America. We haven't opened schools yet in, in Canada. Um, and likely like my university teachers college is going to be uh, all online in first semester right so so it's yeah. interesting to see that thailand's taking a different approach i hope it i hope it works right yeah so, so so um this is your first week how did how have you noticed have you noticed any changes in in students energy levels in their in their positivity and their ability to to learn because clearly they're they're all of them are feeling a great adversity uh you yeah. know, over the last few months and then certainly being at school under these new conditions. So how yeah. has that impacted your teaching and, and impacted your own uh, energy? Honestly, great question. Like it ties into the topic of energy, right? Because of the coronavirus and the situation, it's having an impact on the, the whole world, but every country is dealing with it differently. And so the energy levels in every country is different. As we can see, like around the world, they're, like some, some countries are sweet, like New Zealand, they have no cases of coronavirus anymore. So they're completely yeah, uh, yeah. unlocked down and they were just partying and having the time of their lives. But um, some of the countries are still dealing with record breaking cases every day. In, in Thailand, it's actually, we're on like 38, 39 days of no coronavirus cases in the country. And so interesting. Yeah. So for, in our country, in Thailand, it seems like everyone's really feeling really relieved, really relaxed about it. So there's a lot less tension compared to like a few months ago at school. There's still so many like safety precautions. Everyone has to wear masks, has to do like that one minute social, uh, one meter social distancing rule. And then like okay. the lunch times are separated so that everyone, like there's no playground time. Everyone has, has to stay in the classroom. They half the classes so that every class is only half full. So there's a lot, of, a lot of precautions taken and that affects the energy. But kids are kids, you know, I teach in a primary school and elementary school. So they, I teach like five to 10, 12 year olds. So they're all still very like full of life, full of positivity, full of good energy. But the environment is not what it used to be. There's no like, laughing uh laughing sounds laughing voices oh, in the yeah. playground there's a lot of like yeah precautionary stuff on the ground like tape and signs and everything so that energy is affected in that sense wow. but the so energy of the children are still loving like very happy joyful positive okay. it's just that the environment the 
the structures, the buildings, like the environment is a bit, a bit lower energy. And then all the parents and all the teachers have to be more cautious and follow all the strict rules in the classrooms and everything. So that, that affects the, yeah, that affects the energy a little bit, but it hasn't seemed to affect the okay. kids' energy. They're always like, how does that change your teaching? How does that change your teaching approach though? Yeah. Me, like when I was, when I was there, it was a lot of, uh, <laughs> running around and, uh, like, like engaging. Um, I think yeah. I would, I would suffer in that sense if I had to just sit, like if I had to, uh, for instance, sorry, this is where I was going to lead to. Cause I, I saw a picture from my, my, one of my old schools and, and the, it was an elementary school as well. And the classes they had set up little, um, plexiglass kind of, yeah. shields around each desk so like uh you know every kid is almost isolated in that sense i don't i don't know i don't know how 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 um like that really would definitely um impact your ability to learn and grow i think so for sure how, how are you tackling this as a teacher we don't actually have those screens on every desk to separate every desk not which at is your good. school not at you your don't school. have that okay but we you you i'm sure you're aware like uh, in Thailand schools, all the children love giving high fives to the teachers, right? Yeah. And they always yeah, come up and hug you. But now, like, the, the, it's a lot more awkward. Like, there's a lot more distance between the teachers and the students. Like, the teachers don't feel comfortable, like, being, like, in higher contact and proximity with the children. It makes sense. Makes it sense. does, yeah. But the children always still come but for the high just... fives. And the hugs, you know. You still, oh, you got to be careful. Yeah, that's the thing. So we have to be careful. Like we give it very sparingly, if at all. I'm still, I'm still having to adjust to it because it's so second nature to give everyone high fives and kids run up to you, give you a hug. But now you have to like back off a bit and say like, just give a thumbs up instead of a high five. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So there's that difference now. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I how, just first fascinated because I don't know how that would work. How about <laughs> Lee, like in, in Canada, what's the energy like in Canada or where you, where you live at least? Uh, it's just excitement at this point. I think like, yeah. you know, people are, they've gone to a different phase in the lockdown. Like I think you're allowed to have uh, a group of 10 people now. So things are really starting to change. Um, you know, I'm not, like I have a friend coming today and I'm pretty excited about that because right. I was away for the whole winter. Um, and so like, I really, I haven't had much of a chance to see my friends for the last five or six months. So it's, uh, you know, it's going to be well, it's opening up. So the energy is getting better, right? It's getting more. Yeah, relaxed. yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to work on my social skills too. Cause <laughs> it's again, it's, it's an interesting concept, man. Like, <laughs> like yeah. you, you, I don't want to get too excited and then, and then, you know, get tired, like feel fatigue. So like, you know, like it's like the puppy dog is like, so jumping around and then an hour later you need a nap. Yeah. So, I think <laughs> so that's going to work on that. Yeah. I think like a lot of people around the world will also be trying to readjust to more of a social life, staying at home all day, every day. I think it makes a difference to how you communicate with other people. Right. And you're like facial expression. Yeah. Your body language is all going to have to like adjust again when you start seeing more people at work as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think now we should just wrap it up, but no, we'll take some good time here for our quote. So yeah. what, what was your quote of the week and, and, and how did it make you, you feel uh, who, who wrote it? And um, yeah, go on. Okay, nice. So this quote of the week, um, it's always do what is right not what is easy and the quote i just stumbled upon on instagram and it's a quote that really uh resonates within me because it's hard like we know that we should always do what is right but we don't always do what is right because what is right sometimes is boring or is not fun or is hard you know whereas we always want to do what is like what has instant gratification or what is easy, what is free or whatever. And so doing what is right as opposed to what is easy is all about discipline and it tests your character. And so for example, like simple cases like eating healthy, meditating every day, sleeping early, 
you know, like doing your work that needs to be done on the day. Those are the things that I have to focus more on doing what is right, what I should be doing, what is the right thing to do, as opposed to just doing what is easy, what I want to do, or what is more enjoyable in that moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And where did you find the quote? I found it on Instagram. So I didn't actually have <laughs> like an author attached oh, to it. Good. Maybe it's yeah. just someone, well, you know. No, that's awesome. I yeah. mean, the thing is, it's not always necessary to know who wrote the quote. Like, that's not always important if the message is clear to you. Yeah. And the thing I was thinking is, I don't know if this is wrong, but it, because you may interpret a quote um, differently than their intention was, but if it was meaningful to you and that's what spoke to you, then is that wrong? Like, is that okay? Like, what do you think? Oh, for sure. I think like... Everything, like, because I read a lot of Buddhist sutras, Buddhist teachings, but, it, but ev everything in general, like, if something, like, everyone has a completely different perception of, of everything, right? So there's really no right or wrong. Yeah. So the intended purpose of the writer might be one thing, but the lesson that you learn from it might be completely different. I think they're both valid. Okay. I think it's okay. All right. And sometimes well, even, I'll, like, I'll, I'll one... I'll to my quote. Oh, sorry. All right. No, I was just going to say like one line with one intention from the author might teach you like five different things. <laughs> so I think yes. it's all fine. Yeah. yeah. It's just up to the, uh, the individual and what level they're on and what they need to learn at that moment. They'll learn that. Yes. Yes. What about yourself? So I'll go, I'll go into my uh, quote. Nice. Um, how I came across it and what it means to me because again i don't know if it's exactly what it meant to them but i, I mean i i had a really strong feeling from this quote quote yeah. and so that's why i i wanted to share it so um, okay. my quote is by nelson mandela who's a yeah. very important um intelligent powerful um beautiful black man uh from south africa um, yeah. so his quote i'll start with his quote his quote was I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. Wow. And so That's big. I That's came big. across it on Instagram as well. Yeah. And, wow. Let it sink in. Yeah. To me, that hit. I was in a state where I was really feeling words and really feeling um, people's energy. Like when I read this and it was like, poof. Like it hit me and, and it hit me in, in, in such a way that I had this, this idea or this exercise and I closed my eyes and, and I thought of uh, all the times that I was afraid or I am afraid, things I'm afraid about in the moment, things I was afraid about in the past. Um, what's led me to this, this moment in time right now is uh, triumphing over those fears Absolutely. I wouldn't be here today uh, with a smile on my face and, and I wouldn't be here thinking the thoughts I'm having if I haven't triumphed over so many different fears. And everyone oh. feels fear and it's all relative to, to their ex life experience and their, uh, you know, like what's going on to them. So, so it, it's, it's really, really important to not, uh, not believe that, oh, I'm feeling afraid now I'm, I'm weak. It's like, no, you, yeah. you triumph over that fear. Yeah. That's courage. That's yeah. bravery. And if you are in a moment where you are feeling afraid or you have anxiety about something that you need to do, well, close your eyes and think for a second. This is something I was thinking of. Think about all the previous times you were feeling afraid, maybe the most afraid you've ever felt, maybe not. And did you overcome it? Probably. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. And so you've already had the strength to overcome your fears. So don't let nice. the current fear, the current thing stop you. If you're afraid of doing something, do it anyways, because you can. You've already done it, and you will be able to do it again. So, so that quote by Nelson Mandela triggered a lot of feeling and emotion and growth for me. I wanted to share it. Uh, and I mean, you could, you could literally do, um, an entire podcast on Nelson Mandela quotes. This guy is unbelievable. And, and it's important, I think to, to read teachings and stuff. But if you just even look up quotes by people, you can, you know, 
as we said it before, the embrace the grind, all that stuff. Like, yeah. These things would not be so widely spread if they didn't have true merit to them. So, so it's important to, to really look at them. And uh, sure. so that was my quote. It, it gives me energy because I do, even as I say it now, I feel all the moments that I was afraid and I overcame that fear, even starting this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like I was so nervous, <laughs> but I knew I could do it and I knew that I would do it. And nice. so we just did it you know yeah. and and that's it's life, not that bad right it's not that hard life. yeah it's not that hard and and that's the adversity thing too like yeah. you feel so much better afterwards oh my yeah. god you've alleviated <laughs> and the thing is there'll be another uh fear or there'll be another thing but every time you overcome something it's a lesson and some more wisdom that you take to the next thing you For just sure. keep taking it to the next thing. And like the most wise, uh, important or whatever, strong, brave people in the world, they've overcome probably the most. That's why yeah. they are those people. Yeah. So understand that, you know, yeah, and, and sure. keep going. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Keep going. keep going, guys. Keep going. And that's the thing, you know, like think of all the things that we want to achieve in life and how many of them are prevented because of our fear. So if we were able to learn how to manage that fear or transcend fears or learn from it, then we would be able to accomplish so much more in life. But it's always fear that prevents us. It's always fear that hinders us. So learning to deal with fear, as you said, with courage, then like you, you, you can get so much more done and live a more, a more meaningful, fulfilling life. Yep. And, and you, you have the strength inside you. Yeah, you do. Everyone yeah. does. Everyone has the strength inside them. For sure. So once you really believe that and feel it, you will you will open so many doors for yourself. It's unbelievable. So for I'd sure. like to wrap it up now. Just yeah. Like Forty five minutes. So, yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our podcast today. You can check us out on Instagram and please please subscribe and please give a rating on the podcast, especially if it's on Google podcasts, because it's really helpful for our chart ranking so we can reach organic views for a new audience. So if you've got made it here, please do that. If you enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you've made it up to the end of the video, thank you so much for sticking around for the whole 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And um, so Lee's actually in charge of the podcast. I'm in charge of the video content. So Lee puts it up on, Google, uh, Google podcast, Apple podcast and Spotify. I put it on our, uh, be kind, be happy YouTube channel and Facebook page. So if you, whichever one you guys like to use, please like subscribe. It means a lot to us and it helps our algorithms and it helps us spread our content to more people that wouldn't otherwise be able to access this. And we're going to continue to get better each week, add more yeah. structure, uh, come up with new ideas, uh, as we grow, like that's the important thing. We're growing too, you know. Yeah, for I'm sure. Totally not perfect, yeah. and I'm working. We're learning so hard every on day, this. yeah. Learning and so, if you guys have any this conversation, yeah, for sure. Just this conversation for 45 minutes, I've learned so much, and thanks, Lee. I appreciate that from you as well. But if any of the viewers have anything to say, like want us to change our structure or add something or ask. If you guys have any questions or want us to help resolve something, please let us know and then we can address that in the next podcast, next episode. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, it's important. So that's, okay, thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks for watching everyone. See you guys next week.